as teacher, academic researcher, administrator in Australia, the United Kingdom, Canada, and Sri Lanka. He has also held positions related to marketing, strategic planning, organizational strengthening, and policy development. Since coming to Sri Lanka as foundation principal of Australian College of Business and Technology, he has also held positions as professor and head of department at Fleet and academic dean Monash College, as well as consultant to various Sri Lankan business and educational enterprises. Professor Allen has also conducted guest lectures at several Sri Lankan universities and was in fact the chief guest at the first international business management conference conducted by the Faculty of Management Studies and Commerce of University of Sri Jayanagarapura. He is now extending his university his diversity of interest by taking up the role of Chief Executive Officer for the newly established International Hospitality Management Academy, which will shortly commence a regular postgraduate studies carried out over recent years. He has co-authored a number of papers on his topic for international academic journals. Dear sir, it's time for you to deliver the keynote address. Thank you and good afternoon everyone. Professor Hamantha, Hamantha of the Water, President and Organising Committee, the Chairman of Dialogue, to the HR Dialogue 2013, Mr. Tillema Silva, distinguished members of the academic staff, distinguished guests, students and alumni. I'm very pleased to be invited today to address the first dialogue of the Department of uh, HRM here at the University. It's particularly uh, interesting because this is a very exciting time, I feel, not in a, in a number of ways. It's an exciting time for Sri Lanka as the country continues to grow and prosper. We can see the developments happening around us every day and I'm sure at the university campus itself. The changes that, uh, that are taking place are a good sign that uh, progress, positive progress, is taking place. It's also an interesting time for human resource development because like so many academic disciplines and professional practices, there are always increasingly new challenges coming up in the field of HR. In particular, I think businesses are increasingly aware of the importance of their human resources. I mean, this, has, this is not something new, but increasingly, I think the role of HR is important, but I think it also has the potential to be even more important and more significant in the world of business, public management, whatever. Because as, uh, the human resource is now valued at probably 70% of the value of any organisation. And so this is why I think in the past HR has been a little bit undervalued, but I think with time and with many of the new initiatives that are coming up in the field of HR, many new possibilities are there to make this an even bigger force academically and professionally in the world of business management. I have some slides, so I'm not sure what's happened to those. The topic that I've 
selected today is building the employer image. Image these days is very important. It's very important to us as people. It's also very important to organisations, particularly business organisations, to create an image which is unique, uh, outstanding, and will differentiate them from their competitors in what is a very competitive world. And so the image, building the employer image, is something that I feel has great opportunities for people in the field of HR. As part of their role, HR professionals constantly need to assess their efforts in terms of the responses to the, these three questions. Does your organisation have a workforce that is achieving at the highest possible level? Are employees highly engaged in their work roles? To what extent are employees adding value to the brand images that we already have? The answers, whatever they may be, are very likely to relate to another critical question, namely, what is the image of our organisation as an employer in the eyes of potential new employees as well as the current staff. And so today I want to look at, in a fairly general sort of way, the, uh, the importance of and how the, the employer image can be developed and particularly why this is important for you as in future HR people in organisations or as practising HR professionals at the present time. The development of image is, of course, very much strongly influenced by the strategy of branding. And it's the adoption of branding principles and practices to, make, to meet HRM-related objectives that characterises the subject of this particular talk. You have come across the term brand and branding, and so I'm sure you know what I mean. And uh, Kotler has a definition, I've used the standard Kotler marketing definition of a brand. But I'm not altogether, uh, and I don't want to agree with a man as eminent as uh, Professor uh, Kotler, but I sometimes think his definition is these days a little bit too narrow, because he's talking about a brand as a name, as a term. But the concept of brand, I think, has become much wider in, in terms of its uh, impact on organisations and its representation of organisations. Just to fill you a little bit, just to talk a little bit more about branding and to, to put it into perspective, branding has been around for a long time, since probably the, the late 1800s in post-war uh, US where they had patent medicines and all sorts of things. Even Coca-Cola first, of course, came onto the market in the 1880s as one of the first major brands. With consumerism in the 1920s, some uh, famous brands were established. Westinghouse, General Electric, Ford, Chrysler, I mean, just, just to mention a few off the top of my head. So they were, they were very much product brands. You have simply associated a name with a particular product. But as time went on into the 1880s, we had a, a much broader perspective of um, what a brand is. Brand is very much about perception, isn't it? It's really, it may not necessarily be true what the brand says or represents, hopefully it is, but it's how people see that, that brand that is the most important. One comprehensive definition of a brand, in fact, describes it as a collection of perceptions in the mind of the consumer. And now you can have many types of brands. You have product brands, like Coca-Cola, for example. You have corporate brands. I was reading recently that someone has come up with 14 different types of corporate brands. And more recently, the employer brand. 
not only does a brand make people want to buy, it also is, can sometimes add something to our perception of ourself. If we have a particular product, does it make, it make us feel better? Does it make us look better in the eyes of others? So in brief, the brand is a very powerful tool in creating a sense of affiliation to a corporate purpose. And this people power can apply just as much to the employees of the organisation as to those who buy its product. So branding has now, of course, become far more, um, as I say, diverse. <coughs> Products or consumer brands become household words, not just simply because of their name, but rather from the much broader image that they portray. This image is a fusion or a blending of many components, a product, the company itself, the type of service that a company offers, the type of value adding, and the extent to which principles of corporate social responsibility are demonstrated. Organisations became aware, therefore, it was not simply the product brand that mattered, but also their other external images. The need for a corporate identity, which complemented and reinforced the product identity, was recognised, developed and presented to the external world through a second brand dimension, the corporate brand, which endeavoured to build the image of an organisation in the eyes of its stakeholders. But moving on to our specific topic, the employer brand. The employer brand is really about an organisation being able to attract and retain and gain maximum benefit from their employees. So why is employer branding necessary? Why should, why should I be talking about it today? There are a number, there are lots of changes, there are always changes happening in the world, in the world of business. There are demographic changes happening in our society where the society is getting older and the number of people in the workforce are having to support more and more people who are out of the workforce. So the, the need for good and a sufficient number of workers is becoming increasingly important. There's also the situation of Generation Y. Now most of, most of people here today are Generation Y. And, uh, of course, Generation Y have their own particular characteristics, as you may know. They're different. They're different than from my generation, which is many generations ago. But the uh, Generation Y are people who are much more selective. They are probably more skilled. They have lots of talents. And they are prepared to move around to use those talents to benefit them in their career and in the world of work. There are increasingly demands for skilled labour. With increased technology, the workforce needs to be more skilled. And so there, is, there are, there are you know, only a limited number of people with these type of skills that many companies need. And so there is a greater demand for skilled labour. Greater efficiency is needed in times of economic crisis. These days, many companies, particularly in the more developed uh, world, are having to reduce their workforce. So why is that important for attracting more workers? It's important because the, the, you have to do the same amount of work with fewer employees. Therefore, your employees have to be better skilled, more motivated, more committed, in order to do more in the workplace. Companies are oper operating in very increased competitive environment. And so, again, they need the best resources, that is the best people that they can get. And research has shown time and time again that the, most, the best employees are employees that are committed and stay with the organisation for a long period of time. So for all those reasons, it's very important that companies are able to seek and access the best employees that they get. And so increasingly, in other parts of the world, and also a little, to some extent in Sri Lanka, 
Organisations are defining and strategically managing their image as an employer in the eyes of current and prospective employees in order to improve their ability to recruit and retain the best quality workforce needed to achieve the high level of performance outcomes. So that's what employer branding is trying to do. Building the image of the organisation from the brand in order to attract and retain the best employees. And as HR people, isn't that part of our goal? It's something that we should be thinking about and working very much towards. As I said, what are the benefits of, of the, the having a great employer image? First of all, it's to get enough people into your organisation, and secondly, to get the best people, the best quality of people that you need for your organisation. So that's very important. That's the external image of the organisation to bring people into the organisation. All companies have a all, all companies have an image as an employer. You can't ignore that. But some companies have a better image than others. I'm sure in you might in your mind, if I said the name of certain certain companies, you would say, Ah oh, yes, I would like to work with. But if I said the name of other companies, you might say, Oh no, not unless I'm penniless and so on. Um, I, I won't I wouldn't think about that. So it's very important that to get a sufficient number of good quality workers and organisation works on a strategy to do this. Now some people, some organisations without having any real strategy will still attract good employees. There's no doubt about that. But as I will say later on, that if you, if you deliberately have a strategy for doing this, you will in fact get better benefits. As uh, Collins, in his iconic book, Good to Great, has said, it's important to have the right people on the bus before you figure out where to drive it. And I think that's, that's very important. You need the right people in the organisation to make the organisation the most effective and the most successful it can be. And, uh, and, and branding an image isn't just about bringing people into your organisation. It's also about keeping and motivating and satisfying the people who are in your organisation to be the best and most productive workers that you can get. So for current employees, the benefits of employer image development, employer branding, is increased satisfaction and commitment, greater retention of employees, higher productivity, and enhanced product brand equity. That is making your product brand, your goods, your services, even better in the eyes of the consumer. What about in Sri Lanka? Sometimes we hear unemployed graduates and uh, all those sorts of things, high levels of unemployment, youth unemployment in certain areas. So you might say, well, well why, why then should employer branding be important in Sri Lanka? But, you know, there are a number of factors that we need to take into account. First of all, the development of our post-conflict economy. Nowadays, I'm sure, and uh, I'm talking to a number of people, and uh, uh, talking to uh, Professor Opata just uh, a few minutes ago, we're saying, you know, now high levels of employment are available to graduates, to HR graduates, and which I'm sure has improved a great deal. Even though more people are coming into the courses, more employment opportunities are there. So that's just one example. There are still shortages in certain aspects of the um, uh, of the workforce, and you know, companies are often finding it difficult to attract the, the workers with the skills and the experience and the qualifications that they need. And also, don't forget, employers are competing not just against other employers in Sri Lanka; they're also competing against employees employers in the Middle East, in Europe, and Australia, and wherever, to attract employers, employees from Sri Lanka to work overseas. 
So even for Sri Lankan companies, the need to attract employees and to keep them is just as important as anywhere else in the world. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail about employer branding and uh, I know people when they see my models they say, oh no, not another conceptual model. Um, but I have, I've sort of tried to simplify but also show that branding is not a simple process. It's not something that just anyone can say, all right, I'm going to do branding, um, this is our brand, this is what we will do, and uh, done, tick, achieved. It's not that simple. A brand has to be reflective of so many aspects of the organisation. And you may not be able to see this from the back, I'm sure you can't, but uh, on the left hand side there are a number of um, uh, corporate images, identities that, that exist within an organisation. The corporate brand, the organisational identity that is the internal brand of the organisation, the product brand, all of those have some aspects of the organisation that need to be encompassed into one very, very important item. And that is what's called the employer value proposition. That is, what does an employer offer and require, offer to an employer, employee, and what does it require of an employee? That's what an, a, a, the employer value proposition has to be. An organisation must say, what as an employer am I going to give to my employees and what in return are they going to give to me? And that needs to be very clearly spelled out if you're going to have a, a branding strategy. Now, who should be doing this? Of course, one of the most important people in the organisation to do that is going to be the CEO, the chief executive. But who is a good liaison between that person and the, and the workforce? It's going to be very much the HR people within the organisation, HR professionals. Because it is those, they who be, need to be constantly monitoring what the workforce is doing and um, what they are thinking what they, you know, and, and so on. So an employer value proposition is, is a very important part and that's, uh, and it, it includes a variety of things. It includes things like rewards, opportunities, the organisation of the company or whatever, what type of work is required and what are the people relationships, people values, people skills that are important for the organisation. Now, how do you spell that out? Now, various organisations have tried different methods of uh, have tried different methods of taking their employer proposition and being able to relate it to employees. I'm just going to show you one example. I'm, I'm not sure if it'll be large enough for those at the back, but it's a, it's a very um, well known example, and that is, for example, that, that is the uh, Apple Corporation. It's not going to happen. Um, I think, uh, unfortunately, it's not um, going to happen. It went, you know, often when I do a talk, I always get caught um, the projector breaks down, or the overhead projector blows up, or something. I just saw in the software will show this uh, video. Clip. Corporation. 
They, um, they, uh, their uh, branding image, yeah, they, have a, they have a number of videos which are designed to attract employees. And uh, what they do is show how the organisation uh, can, um, is, is, you know, what are the attributes of the organisation. You need to be brilliant in your field. You need to be innovative. You need to be able to work into a team. And so they have a, uh, they have a variety of videos that uh, demonstrate that. As far as the employer value proposition goes, it's, uh, there's a number of things that we need to think about. And um, while I just think about that, yep, I'll just turn the pages. Um, for the employer value proposition to be effective, it needs to be driven by the CEO of the top management of the organisation. So it's very important as an HR professional that you are able to convince your <coughs> senior people in your organisation, or they might have to convince you, that it is very important to develop a good employer value proposition if you are in, uh, in the seat, uh, seeking new and highly qualified workers. It needs to be communicated effectively throughout the organisation. It needs to be structured to meet the needs of all sectors within the organisation. You need to be able to establish a sound psychological contract that is an understanding between the employer and the employees and it needs to offer a uniqueness over competing employees. Your employer value proposition, a brand needs to identify you as different from someone else. And the same goes with your employer value proposition. You should try to make that um, something unique, something special. And I'll give you a few examples of that in just a moment. So we have our employer value proposition, which is Then we move to the employer brand itself. And we have two aspects to the employer brand. There's the internal brand, which is what happens in the organisation itself. And then there's the external brand, which is important to attract new employees into the organisation. The external brand is often called the promise. The promise of what an organisation can do for you if you join that organisation as an employee. And the internal brand is really the delivery of that promise. When you come into the organisation, what, what, uh, what do you get? Do you get what you were promised? Now I'm sure some people who have been in the workforce will say, no, sometimes that happens. We are promised you know, all this and all that, and it doesn't happen. So it's very important that the promise and the delivery match up. And again, this is why it, it, this whole process, process needs to be managed very carefully. The external brand you need, it needs to be researched to ensure that what people coming into the workforce want is provided. You need to decide, decide upon which attributes to focus upon. You need to compare yourself with your competitors develop recruitment processes to maximise selection based on most important attributes. Some companies have an outside-in strategy, that is, they recruit people with certain qualities to take those qualities into the organisation and build the organisation according. Starbucks is an example for that. And the other thing is, of course, you, when, you, when employers come into the organisation, they really need to know what is the uh, employment brand all about, so that they will be able to adhere to that brand. Interestingly, I did some research a little while back, and this might be interesting, as to what what do graduate students want in employment? I did, I, I did this research with uh, Dr. Bhadra Rachike, and we surveyed graduating students, and we surveyed students who had been in the workforce for quite some time. And with Sri Lankan students, these were the things that were... We, had, we, we gave them a list of, I think it was 26 different characteristics. And which ones did the students think in Sri Lanka were most important to them? There are, I've listed a number there. But you can see, gaining work experience. 
to help them in their career. Looking for future opportunities. Building their own personal qualities, self-esteem. Building their confidence. Getting appreciation from management. And developing good relationships with their superiors and with their workmates. So that's what, that's what uh, people, graduates, particularly in the business area, are looking for in the workforce. It's interesting if you compare that with a similar survey done with students in Australia. What are Australian students wanting in the workforce? Most importantly, they're wanting to be happy. Sri, Sri, Sri Lankan students obviously don't want to be happy when they go to work. So but Australian students are thinking about happiness, they're thinking about salary, oh yes, the money please, um, for, for us to work for you, we're doing you a favour, almost as their attitude. Attractive compensation package, good relationships, similar to the Sri Lankan uh, students, gaining some experience, and they're already thinking about promotion when they come immediately into the workforce, and a fun working environment which is quite different, isn't it, from Sri Lankan students. So it's very important, again, if you're coming from an HR perspective, to go out and say, what, what are the uh, future employees wanting and how can we satisfy them with that? Just as a comparison, what do they least want? Again, for Sri Lankan students, they don't want an exciting environment. They don't want fun. They're not interested in the customers which might sound a little bit strange, but I think they're mainly thinking about themselves uh, in the workforce, and so on. And uh, some of those are similar to the Australian students, but it's sort of interesting to, to find out you know, what do people want in a work situation. The internal employer brand is the other aspect here, I'll oh, explain that, uh, the other aspect, which is um, important, and for that, for, for a worker to understand what is expected of him from the management, it is very important that these things are communicated within the organisation. What, what are the feelings of management? What are the feelings of the workers? So again, this needs to be very carefully managed. Communication lines need to be put in place. Those within the company should have a sound understanding of its mission and vision and values. Management should have a sound understanding of employee needs. You need to regularly review and monitor. And from building that strong brand within the organisation, it would also affect on the new employees. Often when the company has a very strong brand within the company, its own employees will go out and you know, encourage other people to come and work for that company. So, you know, that's, that's a, what we call an inside-out strategy. So, so, that's very simply my model. Organisational images, the employer value composition, the brand, and then the outcomes. The, re the recruitment outcomes and the productivity outcomes. Now, critically, who should be managing this? This is, where, this is why it is so important to people in the HR field. A recent study indicated that 60% of organisations sampled were unclear as to who was responsible for building and maintaining the employer brand. There is a general impression that as employer branding is related to recruitment, it is by default an HR function. But the amount of research done by HR academics has almost completely neglected employer branding, possibly because of the uncertainty as to whether the subject lies within the field of marketing, which is the source of branding theory and practice. The main thrust for HR involvement has come from professional organisations such as the Chartered Institute for Personnel and Development. Their attitude is expressed very succinctly in the statement on the screen there. HR professionals continue in the search for credibility and strategic influence. Embracing the language and conceptual tools of brand power seems an obvious choice. So what does all this mean for human resource management? 
First of all, it means that human resource management can be and should be highly involved in the formulation of the employer value proposition and subsequently ensuring that it is embedded in the ethos and operations of the whole organisation. So here's a chance for HR to be right up there in the real decision-making part of the organisation, participating in the mission and vision, participating in uh, all the senior uh, forums of the organisation in terms of building that image, building that brand for the organisation. Secondly, um, that was what I said secondly. So it can also assist in the transformational leadership that is needed, the role modelling that must demonstrate employees living the brand, the communication, both verbal and non-verbal, that builds commitment and trust between employer and employee, the consistency and distinctiveness of action, and the careful control of each interaction with employees. Fourthly, it should be the role of HR to regularly review and monitor the brand, the image, and its effectiveness in the organisation. And fifthly, HR should also take the lead in developing the external brand from the base of the internal brand. Remember in my diagram you had an internal brand, which parts of it become the external brand. Now it's very important that HR maintains a role in this, because if you give it to marketing people, they're going to look at it purely from a marketing perspective, and I won't say too much about the marketing perspective, but the thing is, um, it's important that, that HR maintain a uh, role in that building that external brand. There are many ways in which that can be done, and I was going to show you some of them. For example, sometimes there's, uh, you can use websites, print, newspapers, events, exhibitions, all of those sorts of things are ways in which the employer image can be conveyed to um, potential employees and to existing employees in many ways. A lot of companies these days are putting in advertisements, they're using websites to promote uh, careers within the company. That's just an example, it's not very clear, of a uh, large hardware retailer um, which is looking to, you know, have, it's, a, it's a very large organisation, it uh, has many, many branches, and of course getting the best workers who are uh, capable of of uh, serving the clients and so providing the service that is needed is not is not easy. And so they they for example put advertisements in the newspaper in the newspapers and so on. There were a couple of other ones I was going to show you on video. I'll try one more time but I don't think I'm going to be lucky. No, it's not my lucky day. So um, and so that's not going to work. Uh, but I was going to show you Google in comparison to Apple. So Google also, you know, say we want people with vision and so on, but they also say, you know, we've got a nice gym, we've got a better cafeteria than Apple, and well, we don't have that say than Apple, but we've got the best food that you can buy, and so on and so forth. So they're obviously saying, yes, we want people who are prepared to work hard and have got three PhDs and so on and so forth, but we also want people who uh, like, you know, want to enjoy themselves in the workplace. So they're catering to that fun and excitement of the thing that so uh, many people are looking for. And then there was another one I was going to show you, another video, which was actually for a company which manufactures daily fruit juice. Now this is in the UK. So each day they, they put fruit juice in bottles and they send it out to um, restaurants, to shops, and whatever. They don't want PhD graduates like um, Google and Apple. What they want are people who are prepared to come to work, to answer the phones, to drive the trucks, to pack the fruit juice, and so on. Oh, I'm talking about fruit juice. And um, so, that, uh, the, uh, so that's what they want. 
So how do, how do they go about building their employer brand? What the, and there is a very good video which they, ha, which, which they have produced. And it's done by the workers in the organisation themselves. And what they want, so what they want are people who come to work, want to have a bit of fun, they're young, they like music. And so in the video, what they do is mime a Lady Gaga song called Bad Romance and uh, we're dancing and so on. And they, so they dance in the office, they dance in the storeroom, they dance in here and everywhere. And uh, I'm not going to do the dance, but uh, nonetheless, they, uh, so they, they, they have said the sort of workers we want are people who like fun, they want to have a good time at work, they like to sing and so on and so forth. So that, um, that is another way of marketing. I'm running out of time very rapidly. And even the video is not going to go. So, finally, you're going to do employer branding. Gulani's going to tell you a little bit more specifics about it, and we'll be playing it on. But uh, how can you make that successful? And from my own experience, there are a few rules that I think that you should when you go into an organisation, if you're going to take on this challenge, there are a few things that you should do. Ensure that the promise to prospective employees contained in the external brand is matched to the delivery to current employees. That's what I said. Make sure you, you, you deliver what you promise. There's a very good example of an IT firm in the United States. It's one of the biggest IT companies. It was built by people who were military people. And so they said, our organisation is about service, it's about sacrifice, it's about dedication, you know, the, the, the principles of, of, the, of the armed forces. You know, we don't run it like an army, but we have the same sorts of principles. So when the, when the global financial crisis came, they said, all right, of course, we have to sacrifice. We have to sacrifice our bonus, we have to sacrifice this, you have to work harder. And so the employees said, all right, that's, that's good, that's our mission, that's our vision, that's our commitment. But when they turned around and had a look, they saw that the management were still driving their Mercedes, they were still getting their bonuses, they were still going to work for half the day. And so, you know, the whole thing was an absolute failure. So you must live the, match the promise. The second thing is live the brand. What you've got to do is make sure people in your organisation know what the brand is and live it. Southwest Airlines are one of the most successful airlines in the United States. And what they did was they said to their employees, the most important people in this organisation are, and what would you expect them to say, the customers. But they didn't. They said the most important people are you, the employees. And so we're going to treat you great. We're going to give you lots of uh, benefits that you want. We're going to provide a great service to you. But on one condition, you've got to provide the same sort of service same sort of uh, extra effort for our customers. And as a result, they, the airline is you know, tops in terms of service um, because of the fact that the employees live the brand and work the brand. Third thing, fully implement your employer branding strategy. Don't half do it, because if you do that, it makes no difference. In some research that I've done, I've shown that companies that don't do employer branding properly, it has no positive effect on the organisation. Always research and monitor what you're doing. Be realistic. Don't promise things that you can't deliver. There was a very good study of a, of a big hospital in uh, Queensland, in Australia. And what they had was, they came up with an employer branding program, they came up with a, a great motto, exceptional care, exceptional people. But what happened is the employees wouldn't buy it. They said, you know, we're not exceptional people. You know, the doctors said the administration are useless. The administration said the doctors are useless. The nurses said the, you know, the cleaners are useless and so on. So they didn't believe in what they were trying to do. So you have to be realistic in terms of what you, what you expect to do. And lastly, be unique. Be unique in what you offer. And another example from an airline is an airline called JetBlue Airlines. 
What they did is they said to their staff, their, their sales staff, their online staff, their telephone staff, you don't have to come to the office, you work at home. And so their, all their uh, sales staff work from their home, which, which suits many of them very much. You know, they can look at the, look after the children uh, or whatever and uh, do so many things there, as well as um, uh, carry out their, their normal duties. So it was something distinctive, it was something different. And that again is a, is a real winner in terms of this thing. So, for the most effective solution to meeting and maintaining manpower goals, the development of the employer image, the employer branding process can provide some answers. To all engaged in or going to be engaged in the HR profession, it is important the opportunities provided through effective employer branding are explored and developed in order to build the effectiveness of the HR role as well as its professional standing within the world of business and management. There will always be a role for HR in organisations, of course. But can that role be broader? Can it be stronger? Employer branding, developing your employer image, offers a great opportunity for HR, a challenge that should not be missed. Thank you.